What's up, bros, and welcome to another BroGraph tutorial. I'm Dave Koss, and uh, sorry it's been a couple weeks. Uh, I know uh, that uh, some people have been asking about where the tutorials are at. Well, I uh, was snowed in and had a bunch of stuff going on, and then I uh, kind of, you know, got these things on my doorstep. And if you haven't heard of these, uh, or this, this is called the Oculus Rift, and um, it allows you to see in 3D uh three six three sixty and all that fun stuff and you can integrate uh the stuff that you build in cinema 4d into it uh which is a lot of fun and yes there will be tutorials coming up about that and how to integrate it with unity and put your own models into oculus rift uh yes it is worth it to buy one if you're curious i've had a lot of people ask me that and um it takes a while to get, so if you want to get one, I suggest you get on the list now. Anyway, that's not what we're talking about today. Today we're talking about V-Ray. And a lot of people kind of don't know where to start when they get into V-Ray. We're not talking about textures today. We're not talking about render settings or anything like that. We're talking about just how to get started, just how to, just to, to get a little bit wet and start making stuff in V-Ray. The hardest thing to do is just get it set up if you've never done it before, especially if you're new to 3D in general. So I'm going to go over to R14. I don't have this for R15. I know that it does work um, because I've used it on another system. So I've got Cinema set up here. And for this, we're going to do something really simple. We're going to start with a floor. So here's our floor. And we're going to put a cube in the middle of it. And that's it, just to start. Now, a lot of people get V-Ray installed and they don't know what to do. So they create um, some textures, like this, for example. I'm going to make a bright white texture and then they'll go to their red their render settings and they'll say oh v-ray and then they'll hit render and this is what they get and you're like oh well that's not very cool uh, it just looks like nothing and that's because there's a bunch of tags and there's a bunch of stuff that you have to know about your camera in order to get started and that's what we're doing. So, rather than creating a regular texture, you have to create a V-Ray texture. Rather than creating a light, you got to do a V-Ray light. Your camera has to be a V-Ray camera. You get the picture. So, I'm going to create a shader, V-Ray bridge. And let's see, just for this one, um, I'm just going to do a... V-Ray two-sided material. And actually, no. Let's not do that. Let's do advanced V-Ray material. We're not really going to do anything with it, though. We're going to just drag it onto our objects. And you hit render. Still, it doesn't look like anything. I'm going to start by putting sunlight. And on my sunlight, I'm going to go to sun, and I'm going to set it to today, and I'm going to set it, though, for like 1,300 hours, something like that. And i got to change my latitude and longitude to something that's used around here. I'm northwest. Okay. There we go. So that sun is in here, but now I also want to uh, go to the sun up here in my objects and add a tag from V-Ray Bridge. I'm going to add a V-Ray Light tag because this is a V-Ray Light, and that tells the computer uh, that you're using V-Ray for this lighting setup. Now if I hit Render, that's whatever, but it still doesn't really look like anything. And what you're going to want to do to make this really look like something is make a V-Ray camera. So I'm going to make a new camera 
and add the tag V-Ray Bridge. Uh, then I'm going to use a physical camera. Now if I go to that camera and I hit render, that's what happens. It's just dark. Well that's because we got a bunch of settings we got to mess with here. Now if you're into photography, some of this will actually make sense to you. Uh, but what you have to do is adjust these settings down here in this tag. Uh, the ISO, the f-stop, and the shutter speed. Well, for one, we're going to set the f-stop, let's say, to 2.4 to start. It's kind of open. Now we're starting to see it here. The other thing is that our ISO is pretty fast. And um, we, I'm going to say we'll go with a, let's go with a 800. And we'll back it back off if it's too bright. Now, see, we're getting a large, large spot. So I'm going to take it back down. I'm going to take it down to 400. That's pretty good. And um, shutter speed, I'm going to leave it at 200. So it just just like your your ISO. Uh, on your camera, this can be way jacked up. The only thing that I don't like about this whole system is that shutter speed isn't really set up like actual shutter speed. It's not like you know one, you know one two hundredth or anything like that. It's just a number. So if I were in real life taking a picture outside like this, I would probably be at about an f-stop of two point four. My ISO would be fairly low. I'll say like two hundred. Um, Make that a little more. I already set it to 400 earlier. So I guess I'll just leave it there. But that works out really well. Now, the sun I have set up, it's in the afternoon, but this is a weird latitude and longitude. So I'm actually going to adjust it so it's a little bit cooler light. That's a little bit better. It was just a little too orange for my taste. And uh, I'll even take it a little bit further. Something more toward white is pretty good. Now, it still doesn't have that kind of GI realistic feel to it. And what we don't have on is any sort of environment. So if you hit Command-B and you go to your V-Ray Bridge settings, uh, one really important thing to remember is whether you're working in centimeters or feet or inches. I'm going to put feet because usually I'm working on things like buildings and stuff like that. And um, I'm going to go to GI, and under Presets, I'm going to select what I like to use to just view still frames. It's not something you can animate with uh, because you'll get a lot of flicker. It's not made for that. But you can go to this number one uh, LC very, very fast. And then uh, you turn the GI on here. Then under environment, uh, you want to make sure that that's on. I believe it is. Uh, you can also add in an environment like a spherical HDRI map or something like that right here in, in texture if you want. Now, when you hit render, this is what comes out of that. Might be kind of bright, so we'll see what we get. Very, very bright. So I'm going to go back to the camera. And I'm going to go back to the settings that we had on there. I'm sorry, not the camera, the camera uh, tag here. Because you have to use the V-Ray settings. Bring that ISO back down now. We'll do like 100. Because if it were the middle of the day, you would really want that low ISO. But that doesn't look good either. So. I think the next step in this case would actually to be to uh, close the iris a little bit. So let's go with like an F5 and then we're going to want to bring the film back to like 200 at least. See what we get. Is it dark? Yeah, it's way too dark. Um, under shutter speed, 
this is where it gets a little confusing because it's not like actual shutter speed just because it's it's just you know 100 what does that mean it doesn't really mean anything the other thing is that your f-stops aren't like regular f-stops um, I'm gonna go up to 400 ISO again because these f-stops you can do anything you could do 2.4 but you could do 3 or 3.2 or you know other random numbers see that feels a lot better right there um, if it's too bright like if it's at 2.4 and you've got your film ISO um, way down it's gonna it's gonna kind of feel like you're looking through sunglasses so you're gonna want to bring up the f-stop a little bit to uh, 5 which is closing the iris um, but you can see that that has a lot more of a realistic feel to it um, that you know it this is a really simple tutorial but it's it's the biggest obstacle I think a lot of people have in that uh, you kind of put V-Ray in and load it up and then you're like okay now what how do I start how do I um, get my camera set up and make it actually kind of look real because V-Ray stuff if you do your textures and your rendering right looks incredibly realistic and so that's kind of how you get started and and hopefully that will kind of give you an idea of how these tags work because everything you do has to have a V-Ray tag if you want to do um, an HDRI sky or something like that uh, and you, you want to put a compositing tag on so that the camera doesn't see it you have to use a V-Ray compositing tag you don't want to use the regular compositing tag it won't work same thing works with things like object buffers everything you do in that manner from a compositing sense and from a camera sense and lighting everything has to have a V-Ray specific tag on it so I hope this was helpful for you. Um, I hope it's a, it's a good start if you were trying to jump into this. I'm going to try and do another tutorial as well on textures and stuff like that. I've got some examples of stuff that I've done with V-Ray that I'll probably show. And uh, it'll give you a better idea of how this works, especially when it comes to doing little things like alpha channels and stuff like that. It's not where you would exactly expect it to be. So there will be another tutorial, part two to this. And uh, so that's all for today. Uh, hope to uh, do a Oculus Rift uh, tutorial soon as well. Please subscribe to us on YouTube. Add us on Facebook so you get all the updates. Like us on there. Um, Twitter us and all that other stuff. That's fun. Go to brograph.com and uh, check it out if you want. We have a couple other things on there like experiments that we do and a blog and all that kind of stuff. So until next time. Have a good one. Later, bros. It's pretty good, I guess.